All right. It is now 6.30 p.m. I'd like to call the design review first 2024 to order. Uh, before I proceed, I would like to take a moment to go over our meeting protocols for today. The South Pasadena Design Review Board will be conducted in person to maximize public safety while still maintaining transparency and public access. Members of the public can observe the meeting via Zoom. Uh, will staff please take roll call? Board Member Martin. Present. Board Member Hill. Here. Board Member Younger. Excused absence. Vice Chair Sai. Here. Chair Nichols. Here. You have quorum. All right. Uh, next, we move on to the approval of the agenda. Board members, do you have any requests for additions or revisions to the agenda? If so, please raise your hand. None. No. Seeing no requests, I would like a vote of the board to proceed with approval of the agenda as submitted. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, next is the disclosure by board members of site visits and ex parte contact for items on today's agenda. Uh, board member Martin? None. Board member Hill? None. Uh, I'll skip Younger. Uh, Vice Chair Tsai? No. And also no for myself. Uh, next is public comment for general items that are not on the agenda. Has staff received any public comment in person or via Zoom? We have not received public comments in chambers. Uh, Guest on Zoom, please click the hand icon to make a public comment on items not on the agenda. And we do not have a public comments via Zoom. Right. All right. So on, sorry, on the consent calendar items, where do I start? I'm sorry, Chair. Yes, just go ahead and read the, the oh, letters in red. All right. Items listed under the consent calendar are considered by the Design Review Board to be routine in nature and will be enacted by one motion unless a public comment has been received or board member requests otherwise, in which case the item will be removed for separate consideration. Uh, so approval of the action minutes as submitted. All those in favor say aye. 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 That's all ayes. All right, so uh, I guess we start our first project review, um, project number 2569-DRX. Uh, staff, do we have a presentation? Yes, we do. Uh, thank you, Chair Nichols, and uh, for the rest of the board members, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Braulio Madrid, uh, and I am the associate planner here at the City of South Pasadena. Uh, we'll be going through a project preview uh, in this item, um, getting the, the intent of this meeting is to obtain some feedback from the commission in regards to the design and any comments or suggestions you may have for the applicant. Uh, but being that this is a project preview, no action will be need, will be taken during tonight's hearing for this item. A future meeting will be created so that it can be presented to uh, the design review board member once it's ready. And so we will begin. All right, so uh, the property is located in the low density residential, also known as RS zone, and it was developed in 1948 uh, with a 1,180 square foot um, property that currently is uh, there. The total lot size is 17,388. Um, and there is an existing carport uh, located at the bottom of the hillside of the property um, facing Indiana Avenue, uh, but also right at the corner of Indiana Avenue and Indiana Place. Here we have some pictures of the existing property. Uh, you can reference the color to the arrows uh, to understand where the picture was taken. All right. As mentioned uh, in our, our introduction, staff believes that the project will benefit greatly from obtaining uh, any kind of level of feedback from the uh, design review board pertaining to the architecture design, and that would allow staff to coordinate with the applicant and present the project with the required appropriate findings uh, in a future DRB meeting.
Uh, so we'll begin with the site plan. Um, the red box indicates the majority of the proposed work, um, which includes the new garage facing Indiana Place um, and the new deck, as well as the new uh, first and second story addition and trellis. Uh, the existing to the right, um, as you see in dashed lines, that is the existing deck that is proposed to be demolished. Uh, demoed as part of the proposal. Uh, here we have up close a roof plan. Um, it shows that uh, the uh, roof styles will be sloped, um, but will be matching the existing uh, roof slope of the of the uh, existing roof line. Uh, here we'll go over the front elevations. So as mentioned at the bottom of the hill, there'll be a a proposed new garage, two-car garage, um, with a um, usable open space right above it. Um, at the very top of the screen, you'll be able to see the addition, uh, which you'll be able to see it proposes the trellis right in front of the uh, first and second story addition, uh, new uh, railing, and um, the applicant will be going over uh, a little bit more details over his selection of the uh, building materials, as well as uh, some of the um, images he'd like to present tonight. Uh, next is the site elevation. Um, uh, one of the issues that staff was uh, working with the applicant in regards to this site elevation is that because this is a downhill slope, the project will be required uh, to have a 10 foot separation between the first and second floor as you're going downhill. Um, and as we work with that in our applicant, you be able to, you can also identify the, uh, that development standard within the staff report um, on page eight, highlighted in red. Um, there's going to be a total of three development standards that the project is yet to meet, um, but our goal is to be able to um, not just implement and have these standards. Uh, be compl uh, compliant to our code, but also integrate any comments on design that, that you may have. Here we have the uh, second site elevation. And lastly, this is the rear elevation where the front addition will be uh, the least visible, um, in this case, from the rear. Uh, the applicant is proposing to introduce uh, some new building materials, uh, everything from a uh, new railing uh, to a brand new trellis, uh, wood siding, um, and I will allow the applicant to go into further details in case uh, any of the board members here have questions for him. Okay, at this point, um, the board members are welcome to start the discussion. The applicant does have a presentation for you all yeah, whenever you're ready. <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, I have a question. So um, you mentioned the roof, the new roof is the same slope as the old roof. And that on the drawings, it says 1 to 12. But then on the, um, on the roof plan, the new roof is 3 to 12. And then on the the chart, the zoning analysis chart, it also says 3 to 12. So I just want clarification. No, uh, that's a very good question. Um, and I have uh, been able to address quite of those errors with the applicant. Okay. Um, those will be finalized with the final drawings. Uh, they're just discrepancies due to the number of revisions that the homeowner has done as part of this project alone. And so as those revisions change the design, change the orientation of the uh, garage, we started seeing, unfortunately, discrepancies that happened along the way. Okay. But for the final plans, you will be, it will be very clear in um, the dimensions, not just in the report, but as well in all of the referencing of the development plans. OK. So if it's matching 1 to 12, that's less than so what is the max height for that in terms of the zoning code? Correct. That would be a 24-foot maximum height. Okay. So if the applicant would like to um, have a 28-foot height limit, 
uh, he will have to propose the new um, the new roofing with a slope of a minimum three to twelve. But the but then the three to twelve would that be go over the twenty eight then? Um, right now, as proposed, there is a small piece of the roof that exceeds the twenty eight foot line. Okay. Um, and that will be one of the um, items that we'll be resolving with the applicant okay. as we move forward. Okay. Thank you for addressing that. Okay, that, I think that's the only question I have for, mm -hmm. for planning. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Uh, all right, so you mentioned the, the applicant has a presentation. Thank you. Thanks. It's been uh, six years going three different clients. Could you go to the, keep scrolling through, there's, there's got to be a, there's an, anyway, this, this, just go through them one by one. This is my current client's second version of what, what they wanted. It uh, is a, it's kind of a, a re revision of the originally approved building. So my first client, uh, wanted a basically a red tower, no deck, no trellis, and if maybe you could go to the next one, that's the one that was approved, and this was four years ago. Go to the next one. It's all steel. All the trellis work was steel. The guardrail was steel verticals. This is the most recent submittal, and it shows the 24 foot height limit. Uh, and the step massing, um, the 10, 10, 15 step massing that it, it, it's within. And the difference between this and the section in terms of 24 feet versus 28 feet is that, if, go to the next one, Lily, is uh, that in section, uh, at a meeting that Matt and Braulio I had, there's the original one. Can you zoom that little red tower? That that was fun. This so they they only had like two hundred thousand, and uh, he's one of the engineers on the Perseverance. Uh, and so this is what he wanted. It, it was this. So you had this beige, nondescript kind of single wide. It looks like a trailer home, right? Horizontal, and then this vertical tower right against it. And I, that's what I wanted too. That's what he was excited about. But when we added the trellis and the uh, deck, because of the step massing rules, they, uh, it shot them over the, uh, their limit and they were sold the house with the plans. And the uh, current owner wanted to use the same plans, use the same approvals, but he let the uh, entitlements go. He, he missed his deadline. And so we're, we were back at square one, and uh, now we've, we've been at it for, what, a year and a half? Back and forth, like ping pong. So go to the next one. So the previous planning department and design review board, it was planning commission? Approved, approved that one. Yeah, right there. Approved that one and said, yeah, that... You know, the director of planning said that trellis will qualify as step massing. That'll, that'll break up the massing enough. But in this, in, so as soon as it was uh, in front of the current administration, it, uh, it was denied. And so in, in a meeting that we've had, what, the last three months, uh, I, it was recommended that I make that trellis a, uh, an enclosed patio use the la county code as an enclosed patio and unfortunately that says an enclosed patio can't have more than 65 percent of the wall area uh enclosed no open no enclosed so they, they didn't you know the idea of a patio they just didn't want it to be another room so this is this qualifies uh under that uh under that rule it's more than 65% open. It's the same thing. Instead, we put a little roof on it to make it, you know, to, and 
Apparently that doesn't cut it either. So, so what we've done, so my client just gave up and said, okay, cut it all down to the one in 12 pitch and also add more square footage on the side. So it's become kind of this uh, mishmash. Um, uh, the one in 12 works. The one in 12, it's well below the 24 foot height limit. It's just whether or not it has any uh, design, redeeming qualities design wise. So um, I think all the siding now is gonna be that cedar, cedar siding, you know, you've seen that uh, one by six plank siding and, and then the, the trellis will be wood as well. And the guardrail will all be cable rail. Um, I don't, you know, I don't think uh, I don't think it has any of the qualities. If you go to the next one, Lily, the next one of the renderings, I like the one before, but they've given up trying. I think. Anyway, so. So what now they're what they're trying to do now is match the existing roof roof line, bring it well below the 24 foot height limit, and then and then try and make that front the facade, you know, work together in terms of the uh, the window types and and um, and material and uh, basically all the same color. I think that's it. Yeah, that yeah it's a long long ways from that so does uh anyone have any questions for the applicant i do i have a few um can do you mind clarifying so what what is the latest design was it that gray image but you're saying it's different materials what's the Latest. Yeah, because I'm seeing the renderings and I'm seeing the drawings in the packet. And I just want to kind of make sense of what is being proposed. There's no rendering of the latest. Of the latest, okay. Yeah, if you look at the, there's an elevation I talked about, step yeah. passing, that's the latest. So okay. it's just a very low sloping roof, very low slung, and lots lots of square footage on the front. Okay, so the renderings were more to show the history Yeah. and the how the previous approval and then how that's evolved, and then what we're looking at and what we're commenting on is is what was provided, just the drawings and the elevations. Okay, right. and that's, that's the latest. That's, okay, that's all. I don't. I don't think I gave you a rendering. Yet. I didn't see it in the packet, and that's. I mean, that's fine. I just no, was curious. I was I trying to make that. sense of what the other renderings were in relationship to the drawings that that we're seeing here. I, I think uh, the elevations that you showed with the red boxes around them. That's the mo that's the latest. Correct. So the elevations that were shown on the screen and provided to you in your packet are the latest revisions that the applicant has provided. Um, before providing renderings, he wants to get this feedback. The, those renderings that we've seen, they were either from a previous project or the initial submittals, uh, but we haven't had any uh, new renderings with the updated changes uh, to the project. Okay, great. That makes, that makes sense. And it sounds like that the challenges right now or the concerns on the on this proposal it has to do with the slope of the roof and the height exceeding the height limit is that am i understanding that correctly and, and the step up and the step up so um if we look at page number eight yeah um the downhill building wall is the uh, development standard that um, um the applicant jim fenske is discussing so Although this interpretation was made in the past, staff is willing to make the same interpretation in honor that the uh, additional trellis could be counted as a step forward. But there's two parts to this development uh, standard. And, and the main standard that they cannot meet is no single building wall on the downhill side of the house shall exceed 15 feet in height above grade. And so what staff recommended that he, he try is that he he would, instead of placing an open trellis, create an enclosed trellis so that can be considered a wall. And now we no longer have a 15-foot or larger single building wall um, facing the downhill slope. And if we can go back to my PowerPoint. Um, can, can I ask a clarifying question? Do, so by trellis, do you mean the pergola 
the awning extension from the like the with the beams that are showing is that what's meant by trellis to break up so it's 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 a horizontal um element it's not a vertical is that correct that we're talking about but so I, right now it's they're not showing it enclosed um on the there's drawing. a notation that says enclosed patio and i think it was the intent to follow staff's direction um and unfortunately as part of the revisions it, it was revised to a trellis open trellis um so Going back to the development standard, there's two parts to it. The first one is not exceeding more than 15 foot. Yeah. And then the second part is that um, additional building height on the downhill side may be allowed in 15 foot increments where each increment is stepped back from the lower wall with a minimum of a tent of 10 feet. And so um, we believe that through the design, the intent of that part of the development standards being met but we wouldn't be able to justify and create the findings since there is a more than 15 foot high uh, single wall facing the downhill slope. But if, if, if uh, the design review board has common suggestions, staff is very happy to hear um, you know, what, what creative solutions we can, we, can, we can come up with. Okay, understood, makes sense. Thank you, thanks for clarifying that. Um, I think I understand better now what's being presented and the proposal and and materials too that you mentioned so i think that's great so i don't have any further questions for the applicant thanks any other all right uh I... <clears throat> um the next thing says we will now close public comments but it, we didn't ask for public comments is there i think maybe some text is missing from here uh, you're correct, Chair. Uh, since this item is now a public hearing, so what oh, happens okay. more is more as a preview. All right. All um, right. So, so the staff and the yeah, yeah, all right. So I guess with no public comments, we can just have a discussion. So would someone like to begin the discussion? I mean, I can I, I can kick us, kick us off. Um, I would say that I'm actually familiar with the street, and so I know. And this is at the base, I believe, of a hill. So there's other. There's other houses above this. And so it's more, I mean, there's there's a continuous hill, but it's kind of at the, the an intersection. And this is an improvement, I think, from the current existing project. So that's great. And it seems like it fits in um, with the context, I would say. In terms of giving some feedback, for me, the massing that, you know, introducing a trellis or a trellis system or something to just kind of visually break up the massing seems acceptable to me. I understand that there's zoning requirements to, to, to be met and there's sometimes the interpretation can be difficult. Um, but to me, it seems like that is a viable solution, I, As, especially if it means the difference between this getting built and this not getting built. It's an improvement from what's there now. So in my mind, if that's the, if that's going to be the make it or break it, then I feel that we should kind of work with the applicants to make this project feasible. So that's my kind of initial assessment, just understanding the problems and the challenges with the design. And I agree. And I think also having it been approved with the trellis to break up the massing, I feel more comfortable leaning towards that as well. Yeah. Um, I personally have seen projects, other projects um, on a hillside property w using a trellis to break up that massing to achieve that um, to break up that particular address that particular zoning section code. So um, I have seen it done before. So I think I don't have a problem with that using the trellis. And also like to, to continue on that point, it's hard to say because we don't have a side by side of here's the trellis, here's an enclosed patio, but just visualizing it or assuming what it may look like, I actually think that it may actually be a detriment to the design, but I can't be, we can't be certain until we were to actually see that option. I mean, I'm just trying to visualize it in my head of what, what's going to look like if it's an enclosed patio. You do have a separate massing, but it may not necessarily be an improvement in the overall design. There is something elegant about the pergola, the trellis there. That's um, it's got the the open members. It has some nice shading. I mean, that's really cool. The renderings illustrate that the previous design with the rels the renderings it shows kind of the complexity um, and variation that's 
you know, the shadows and the way that it was, the way that it was done, it's, it's actually, I think, done very well. So it's hard because I understand there's the code, the zoning code requirement to meet, but I also think that it's a, it's a good design solution. So I'm, I'm kind of torn. I'm a little reluctant to say, yeah, just enclose this because that meets the letter of the code when this is a good proposal. Yeah, so. I always think that, like, the, it seems like the, the intent of it is you, you, you want to step the massing so you make something feel smaller, but then if you enclose that, that patio, it's, an, it's essentially making it feel yeah, bigger. Yeah, I think so. so. It, it seems like a, a step in the wrong direction, even if it is, like, sort of technically meeting the code. Yeah. To me, like, you're just adding a whole other new kind of box on yeah. the front which I feel like will be, will take away from this. Right, so. I agree. Yeah, I agree with that too. And then in terms of the height, I mean, that's a tricky one because I actually think the, this, the roof design is pretty elegant, it seems like. I mean, I'm just basing it off. I don't see the latest renderings, but just basing off what I'm seeing this elevation, it looks to be like a really elegant solution. It's simple. Um, and so I know that it exceeds the heights by what it, what is it exceeding it by? It's supposed to be 24 and it's at 27 and change, I thought I saw there. Um, so it is a few feet, which is unfortunate in terms of the, um, you know, going beyond code requirements. But I also feel like it's, like I said, I think it's a good design solution. So I'm kind of, I'm torn on that one too. I don't know if there's an, any recommendations we have for. I guess it's the slope, right, to match the existing roof or can they build up the slope <laughs> or does it have to be existing can you like if you were to elevate the slope on the sides of the structure do you measure it from that point then so if they were to add fill to also i noticed in well the renderings they didn't have an eave in the renderings but i noticed it's the eave that crosses over yes the height limit um and it looks in section, that's what it looks like. So if there was no Eve, like the original design that's in the renderings, then I don't I don't know how I think works. there's a code exception that allows Eves. And I thought that I could be wrong. You probably know better than I do. I think that's for setback. It's only for setback. So there's no exception for the like that two feet if it's like an architectural element or okay, or an Eve. All right. Um huh. I mean that's I think it's tricky because I think it's a little it also, not that it, hillside's difficult because I feel like it's a slightly arbitrary because usually the slopes and the grading, it, there's variation. So you draw it on a drawing, you show it what it is, and then you just, you, you basically, um, you offset that line and you say, this is the distance. And then if it goes over it, it goes over it. But in reality, when you're seeing this built into the hillside, is it really going to be that, um, you know, overwhelming offensive in terms of its height. And I think kind of really breaking it down to the essence of it and what the intent of the code is versus, you know, the actual. Um... I actually like the original design with no Eve because I think yeah. the, the design intention, what I felt like from the original renderings was to have that contrast, yeah. the old and the new. Yeah. And not having that Eve, because now I feel like it's trying to incorporate the addition into Mm. the existing house but then like the materials are also different you know the stucco and then the wood siding yeah. is also different so it's like i want to match but i don't want to match so i it, it got confused in when i looked at these drawings but when i saw the rendering i was like oh that makes so much sense like i like i like the design and the renderings yeah I also have to say the garage in replacing that carport, that carport is, <laughs> is a bit of an eyesore. It's like right when you come down that hill and you see that it's, it's very overwhelming the structure. And so I think that that the garage would also be a nice addition. And you kind of got that massing at the lower elevation and then you move up and you have the, what I'm going to refer to as the, is the tower, the larger part. And then it kind of steps down again. So I feel like the massing, there's a lot of variation on this project. 
And so I think it's it will integrate really well with the topographies there and the surrounding um, and the surrounding uh, houses in that area. Um, I don't know. I it's I'm hard to it, it's hard to get too much into the details. I feel like I'm in my mind comparing between the renderings that we're seeing and then what's here. And I'm trying to understand a little bit more of this. I feel like the next step, and obviously it will be, is to do the renderings and provide those and kind of comment on them. So I'm trying to, what do you think we can offer or help? So this way that process is I think faster. And I feel like they need to decide, like, yeah. do we want to be different or do we want to like, Hmm. Like, do you want to make it clear that it's a new addition, you mean, versus, yeah, or more integrated where everything right. kind of blends? Right. Because when I looked at these drawings, it was, it, that's what it felt like. But it was, you know, these are two two dimension. Yeah. And there's no, like, color, even though we have the material boards to see. Like, I, I, I see the new siding is, like, wood siding versus in the photographs, it's, like, painted siding. So I could see there's there's that contrast that they're trying to achieve. Um but then when I see the roof, I'm like, oh, it's trying to look like what it was before. Yeah. But then the stucco, then I'm like, then I don't like the stucco, right? Yeah. Or if I see with the roof. But then if when I saw the rendering with no Eve, I was like, oh, I actually do like the stucco contrast with the siding, the painted siding, you know. So I'm like torn too. <laughs> It's yeah, it's it seems like it just based on the drawing, it seems like there's a little bit of an identity crisis. Like, are we going to be different? Or are we going to blend and truly just be the same? And I think it's trying to do a little bit of both. Right. So maybe just trying to do one approach or the other will be a little bit clearer. Um, and then in terms of some of the these, like the trellis, the the the, the canopy, the um, pergola tre trellis design, I actually think that integrates nice with the the cable guardrail too, mm -hmm. because they both have that idea of the the separation and lights passes through and there's, you know, the the um the the patterning I think will make it pretty nice. Um yeah. so I I like that based on what I'm seeing on the elevations here and, and the material. And it'll match the new aluminum windows. Yes. The, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I think that'll be really nice too. Um the only thing about the windows I'd say, and this is just a recommendation. I don't, I don't really know how I feel. I'm looking at A12, which is where the materials, it says color and material board. And on the, again, when I'm referring to the addition, the tower, the second level, those windows seem a bit large for that massing. In this specific elevation, it's the south elevation. I don't know how you guys feel about that. If you think it's too big or if you think it, if they, if it looks, there's an, there's an, when I first looked at it, I was like, oh, this is really nice. I don't mind that. But as I look at it more, I'm like, maybe it needs to be a little bit smaller. I'm not sure the windows. I don't mind them. You I don't think it, it works with the original tower idea. Like if you consider that this, the taller portion, it's only like a quarter, it's only 25% of that south elevation. Yeah. So I think it's still retaining some of that tower, tower quality. And I think the windows give it an interesting identity I think, it, I think it looks great um i don't think they're too big all right yeah i can i also can get behind that if that makes sense um with regards to the the trellis setback discussion and the height discussion i think the height to me is more important to try to make it work within the height. Um, and then the, the interpretation of the trellis as providing the necessary visual setback, I think is I'm fine with that. I think it I think it looks good. Uh, one thing that I had that I thought was curious and I'm not sure how to look in three dimensions was on the on the second floor plan on the second floor the the bathroom bathroom three and I guess it's the master bedroom they're like not parallel and there's kind of a 
kind of a separation, which I think looks interesting in plan. Um, but I'm not sure how that'll look in elevation because in the elevation, there's just a line between the bathroom wall and the bedroom wall. Whereas I think the, there should be more of like a, a shadow or reveal of those split objects. So I'd be interested to see how this looks three-dimensionally because I think that's like a pretty nuanced uh, bit of design and I think it needs to be evaluated three-dimensionally. I would agree, especially since that line on the foundation goes all the way down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't see like how that articulation or how that stereo thing. I think it might, it, might, it might look a little wonky like if I just use my imagination, but seeing it in 3D, I think would really, would really. And just a comment on the second floor deck. It says elastomeric roof deck. On a previous project, I think we did not like that. So that was something that I just want to point out. I think looking at the elevations more, I agree with you in the window. On the other elevations, all the windows have a different scale. They're much smaller. And then I looked at the plan. Those two big windows are in a bedroom. So mm -hmm. if it was like a living space, I, I would say like, it makes sense. But for like a bedroom, it could it could change. Yeah. have a different composition or scale yeah i think it's one of the things that can be like studied and looked at and then i think checking that in 3d and kind of understanding how it looks because maybe I, i'm speculating here i think maybe it might look okay with those large oversized windows and that's the only one there but that's going to draw a lot of attention to that and it may be okay but then yes, it it does it that one is definitely making a statement. And so like it's like it, I'm okay with the statement, I think, but I think we have to see what it would look like in 3D. I think in in elevation, it almost looks like there's two separate spaces. But then if you look, if you're if you're in the room looking at the windows, you're gonna see like some windows that have like a different height, and then right next to it, then you have another window. So it has different sill height. I think that bothers me when I see that in some houses. So, um, yeah, I think it just needs to be studied a little. Yeah, more. I agree with that. Um, like especially the side by side. I think the side, yeah. So, I'll try to close this one out. Yeah, uh, thank you, um, Chair, members of the board. I think uh, the purpose is um, to cite and just have the um, all the board members kind of let us know your feedback, your thought process, so we can circle back to the applicant and kind of bring the item back. So hopefully, the next time when we bring this back to the to the board, and it'll be kind of a smoother process process that. Hopefully they address all the comments that you raised and hopefully can get it approved next time around. But uh, we really appreciate all the comments you provided. Do Does the applicant have questions for us maybe before he leaves just to take advantage of the, our... Yeah, I think... We'll, I don't know if that... If you have any. Yeah, based on what we... What we said. Or if you want yeah. us to clarify anything. I don't know. What? So, <clears throat> so you could tell I, uh, that I'm, I kind of like the tower thing, right? That was really, you know, my heart's desire when we first started doing it. And then we started adding the tutu, I called it, you know, all the other other stuff. I like the sleek kind of tower. And it just didn't fly with planning. That's okay. Everybody likes a deck. And the trellis was, it is. There's a lot of really good shadow play when you, when you rotate it. 
and it's facing south, so it's going to be really strong, south and west. And so it it uh, it's difficult to get a second client to uh, you know that it's their house, it's their money, it's it's like and there's a little bit of competition going on, I'll say, but it's his deal. So they you know they just didn't like the the look it was like uh, it sticks out too much it's too strong mm -hmm. they wanted to blend so the the other client was all all for you know being uh mm -hmm. sticking out you know and contrast the vertical versus the horizontal mm -hmm. the the stucco block with the steel versus the single wide with the siding you know this guy is is like well you know quieter less money just just bring it you know tone it down and so eventually we got to the match all the roofs idea look you know luckily there's a lot of different roofs and you can play with that and there'll be there'll be subtlety in the blending and then uh it's um you know it'll it it'll still be all right if uh if you know the roof system will still have it'll have an eve you know, probably they want to do the Eve. They, mm. they show me stuff from Howes, right? So in reference to the Eve question, uh, I think the Eve is going to stay because mm -hmm. there's a, a house that are fix on, fixated on from Howes that has that, you know, that, you know, that look, the, the square windows and the cedar siding. And it's like, a, mm -hmm. and so that is what I'm going to do. I mean, I'm going to do mm. my due diligence and be the service architect that I was meant to be right so so the the idea is just just I'll, I'll bring it down so that it's just um blended with an eave below the 24 feet meets the step massing requirements with uh ideally no walls because the client is worried about if it's if there's walls there it's going to be dark in the living room and then uh, maybe we can massage some of the windows so that they're a little more, a little less, you know, odd, odd looking. In the original design, that was a cut. You know, the tower had this cut that went all the way around it with recessed, deep set windows, and it was, it was, you know, it was tough. And uh, this, this is not that. He's talking about looking at the, the valley. You know, as you come up, right, looking out. Uh, through his bedroom after a hard day and you know uh, and uh he, he wants that he wants to be able to so okay all right it's interior driven it's not you know it's not about the outside but i'll i'll work on that what else the i think that's it so the 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 contrast is really it's the cedar siding cable rail wood trellis some stucco break it up and i think the shadow james what was uh what was that i mean i, I was really in love with the, the fact in between the, took the, the bedroom player, and the bathroom the bathroom you, I, the, on one of the tower ones there's a split on the outside that was that was fun so that's gone so i think it looks i like the way it looks in plan but would it yeah, be really it hard to get stucco into that and stucco and siding into that little corner <laughs> you do something fab and, and then paint yeah. color. but the material changes well, right like, if it's steel troweled and you take some bonderized iron and you shape it hmm. right you get it broken the yeah. right and then you set it in and then you can get a sponge in there okay. to bow it so nobody will know <laughs> get some stucco on there it'll last long enough for the pictures <laughs> thanks thanks All right. I would also like to uh, thank the Design Review Board for today's comments. We have taken really careful notes, and uh, we look forward to coming back with this project, hopefully getting uh, obtaining all support. Um, the most important thing is understanding uh, whether or not uh, you agreed with the interpretation of, of how we were going to apply that development standard, and it sounds like um, the intent of the code is still being met. So we appreciate all that feedback. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, now onto project number DRX24-0005. Um, the staff have a presentation. Good evening, board members. I'm Tatiana Marin, and I will be presenting item number four on today's agenda, 
DRX 24-005, located at 1422 Maple Street. So here we have an aerial view of the subject site. The subject property is located at the north side of Maple Street, located in the residential low density zone. Built in 1937, the subject site is rect a rectangular shaped lot that measures a total of 7,448 square feet and is developed with an existing 1,686 square foot, one story single family residence. Additionally, the property was developed with a detached garage measuring 292 square feet. The applicant is requesting a design review uh, permit for a 542 square foot single story rear addition. Additionally, the project includes a new 238 square foot attached patio cover to the new addition. Uh, earlier today, staff provided a memo providing the revised plans that re reflect the proposed patio cover. Additionally, the proposed addition will match the existing materials of the home with matching composition shingles and stucco. The proposed patio cover will have a rolled composite roof to match the existing color of the roof, which is brown. In addition, all changes are being proposed to the rear of the home and no changes are proposed to the front facade of the existing home. Here we have the existing site plan. And here we have the proposed site plan that includes the proposed rear addition and the proposed patio cover. Now we have the existing and proposed floor plan. Per project plans, the existing sunroom will be demolished to make space for the new addition to include all new windows, doors, and roofing materials to match the existing character of the home. As a result, the dwelling will have a total of four bedrooms. Here we have the existing and the proposed roof plans. The proposed roof plan will continue the style of the existing roof. And here we have the south front elevation. As you can see, there will be no changes to the front elevation. And now we have the rear north elevation. And now we have the existing and proposed west side elevation with the patio cover highlighted in a darker green. Finally, we have the existing and proposed east side elevation. As proposed, the project complies to all applicable development standards for the RS zone, development standards for non-conforming lots, and as well as the city's design guidelines. Staff recommends that the board find the project exempt under CEQA guidelines sections 15301, class one for existing facilities, Class one includes additions under 10,000 square feet to an existing structure. And the design review board approved the project number DRX 24-005, subject to the conditions of approval. And this concludes staff's presentation. Staff is happy to answer any questions as well as the project applicant is here. Thank you. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, does anyone have any questions for staff? No. Um, this might be a question for the applicant, but are the existing windows vinyl also? And I don't know if that if they know if anybody knows that answer. I'm just curious because I know what's being proposed is the vinyl. That is correct. They're all vinyl. The existing. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. That's my only question. Thank you. All right. Um, oh, we um, does the applicant have a presentation? They do not, but they're here to answer your questions. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions for the applicant? No. I just had one. Um, this is actually less of a design question, and but the, the roofs just slope into one another, and it looks like the water's just going to... Yeah, there. yeah. So, so what we're doing is we're creating a higher roof uh, in the new addition. So we're going from an eight-foot roof to a nine-foot roof in, in the new addition. So what we'll do is we'll create crickets that will get okay. the water out. Okay, uh, I just did the, 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 the roof plan doesn't have the crickets indicated. That's why I was just curious. Actually, they'll be below the roof line. So what we do is we we run um, at a 45, we'll run two by fours and, and then roof all that. Okay. And then it'll pull the, push the water out. Okay, I was just 
like I said, it wasn't the same question, but you just see these two things yeah. coming together. All, All right. right. Cool. Thank you. Uh, and any other questions for that? Um, I will now open uh, up to public hearing. Staff, are there any public comments for this item? We have not received public comments uh, in chambers. Attendees participating on Zoom, please click the hand icon to make a public comment on item number four. And we do not have public comments via Zoom. Great, thank you. Uh, does the applicant, oh, I guess you don't need a rebuttal. No comments, sorry. Um, all right, we will now close the public comments and have discussion amongst the board. Would someone like to begin the discussion? Uh, um, I think it's appropriate scale style um, finishes. I think the um, plan is very much improved. I, I really like the, it, I mean, we're not, really commenting on the interior, but I, I, looking at the floor plan, I feel like the flow of the house makes so much more sense now. And I think it'll, it's a great improvement to the property. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that, you know, I mean, for starters, the additions kind of tucked away on the rear mm -hmm. and you can't really see it, but it, it, it kind of, it doesn't overwhelm the house. It, it kind of fits in. It, it, you could drive by and think that it was all original and that, you know, so I, I, I don't take any issues with it myself. I, I agree with that. I think it's well integrated. It's, I think the layout, I was looking at the plans too. I think it's definitely an improvement. I think in terms of the exterior, the massing, it's well integrated. The roof line looks well integrated. Um, the windows, I mean, my only question was about the vinyl, but if there's already existing vinyl windows, I know the, in the past, we've really kind of shied away from vinyl. I know vinyl is definitely improving in terms of quality, but it's something that's always been um, that we may that we recommend, you know, considering other materials, aluminum, or I know if it were historic, it would be probably wood, but we are not recommending that. Um, so that's something to consider. The only other thing that I noticed on A3 was it looked like some of the windows, and I just think this might be a graphic thing, were showing mullions, uh, or not mullions, muntins on them. And I'm not sure if that was intentional or not. It doesn't look like the elevations have that. So I'm going to assume that the elevations are accurate. Um, so that was the only other thing I noticed. But I again, I think it's just a graphic um, No, I'm talking about the month. So it, on A3, I don't know if we can pull that up. It says emergency escape exit windows. And I think it's just because it's showing a the diagram, like it's showing it as a diagram. And I don't think that's actually representing the windows, but I don't, I don't know. I just wanted to, because the none of the elevations show it. It's just on the the window schedule. Yeah, it might just be a boilerplate kind of. I think that's what the yeah, boilerplate, the perfect. That's what I was the word I was looking for. That it might just be a boilerplate. So if that's not the intent, great, because they don't exist anywhere else. The so I think then it would be best to continue that language around the house. That was my only comment. Yeah, it's just like the keynotes. I, it, I don't know if you can see here. It's just this here. Yeah, it's for the. Yeah, it's for the egress windows. Yeah. yeah, it's for the egress windows. For the egress windows, it it shows them. I don't know if you're planning on putting them in or not. So that was more the question. If you're planning on doing the 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 you know how the, they have the the muntins in there, the detail. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then that's not what you guys are going to actually build. Okay. Yeah. Windows and the elevations that are accurate. Okay. Perfect. Other comments? All right. Um, all right. I guess uh, we can ask for a motion um, to approve. I'll make the motion. I make the motion to approve the project as submitted um, with the conditions of approval. I'll second that. Uh, will staff please take roll call? Board Member Martin? Aye. Board Member Hill? Aye. 
Vice Chair Sai. Yes. And Chair Nichols. Yes. Motion carries. Congratulations. This project has been approved subject to the conditions of approval. This decision is final unless an appeal is filed within 15 days from today. No construction activity may commence during this period. Appeal forms may be obtained from the city clerk's office. Thank you. This closes the public hearing for agenda item number four. Good evening, um, Chair, members of the board. Feel comfortable presenting on this one. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the, item be, the item before you tonight is item number five, which is a discussion item to talk about potential zoning code amendment that staff is planning to take on for the next um, several months. Um, staff like getting to the background. So as um, standard professional practice that every city agency periodically review our development standards as well as the development review process to ensure they meet the um, current state law as well as remain uh, relevant also up to, to kind of today's um, the practice. So um, last month, um, July 17, city council initiated the zoning code amendment to direct staff to explore uh, potential zoning code um, or municipal code update to streamline some of the, uh, our application process. Um, specifically, staff identify several areas in the code, whether it be a zoning code or municipal code, that could use some um, update. So those are including accessory dwelling, which is ADU regulations, uh, project streamlining, and the last one is um, the routine periodic and also consistency revision to the code. So staff, I, um, initially staff identified several items that could need some uh, improvement and, and one of the attachment in the staff report has um, identified some staff's initial observations so, uh, for example, what we identify initially, for example, the ADU regulations and also um, projects or science streamlining. So, for example, uh, the project could be the room addition project that we um, reviewed uh, earlier today and also could be the chair review that um, both Chair Nichols and also board member Hill used to review also, uh, by Chair Sai used to review. So, some of the process could be maybe streamlining and also some of the amendment process. For example, every time if city staff want to initiate a zoning code amendment, we have to go to the city council first before staff can take on those assignments. So maybe we can simplify that process. And another items could be um, entitlement expiration day. For example, the, the item you just approved earlier today, they only have one year to um, to submit the plan to the building safety. So we definitely understand for the last several years that we have the COVID pandemic, the, the shortage, whether it be uh, material, labor, also interest rate, the, the, cost, the raising costs in construction. So maybe it's time to explore, should we extend the entitlement expiration date to longer period? So there's something that staff is kind of looking for, for feedback. And the last but not least is the routine update, for example, uh, would it be a definition needs to be updated? Also, um, kind of being consistent in different sections of the code need to have consistency. So for the next several months, staff will be conducting public outreach, uh, including going to different advisory bodies, such as um, this body, as well as going to planning commission, culture heritage commission, but also conduct public outreach, would it be contacting uh, local residents, local architects, the contractors, and various community organizations, would it be a WISPOD or Chamber of Commerce to get kind of feedback, what the, um, the thought process, what are some of the items that you want staff to look into? And hopefully we can have a, a draft uh, amendment in the fall of this year and 
hopefully uh, at the end of this year or early 2025, staff can bring the co-amendment to Planning Commission, also City Council for their considerations. So at the end, staff would just um, asking the board to receive this presentation and also provide feedback. I think, um, I know this is a very beginning of this process. I know sometimes when we uh, think about items, we didn't think about like right at this moment. I think, I think today's only the beginning. I think once all of you get to work on projects or hear from your neighbors, you can always you know, email staff, hey, how about this code section? Can we look into ex streamlining this code section? But at least for today's purposes, staff was want to get your initial feedback. So I also want to reach out to other commissions, board members, and uh, organizations as well. So thank you for uh, your listening and let us know your thoughts. Thank you. Thanks. I, I think if um, maybe whoever want to start, just kind of let, let us know your okay. initial thought process and what the stuff, the item that you want staff to look into or your suggestions. Staff would like to <laughs> hear that. I actually have a question. So in terms of the process, I know that on July 17th, city council had approved, but that gives you, that gives staff the right to go and just propose the amendments to city council. Is that right? And then city council will still have to approve the amendments, correct? Yes. So what staff identifies is just a very broader term of the items, but it could be very, it could be items not mentioned in the staff report. Okay. So I think, at least um, our thought process is to want us kind of focus on more project streamlining. We definitely heard from the community members about, for example, hillside development standards. Yeah, that's a total different task that that might need more time. <laughs> so I think for 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 this particular zoning code amendment, it's more about streamlining, more come on, probably a narrow focus. So so staff. We do have some um, idea that maybe not all of them will be under one zoning code amendment. For example, maybe we just focus on project streamlining, their expiration date. Maybe ADU is a separate discussion because okay. ADU would definitely understand there's a part of a ADU would be historical homes, part of ADU would be non-historical homes. So that could be tricky too. So that that could be a could be a separate zoning code amendment that staff need to take on a later later part. So. So I think right now we just want to get all your thoughts. So, and we might break into different zoning co amendments, like a different projects, bring it to planning commission, city council, maybe break into different smaller tasks, get something done. Well, for example, the ADU hillside development, that could be a different, different amendment. Okay. That's, I think that's, I think it's great to kind of go through. I always, I don't know if, if you guys have had a similar experience, but I know when I'm going through the zoning code, there are times I find inconsistencies or things that may be a little unclear. So it's helpful and that gives staff, this this process then gives staff that opportunity to make those changes or clarities in the code, right? That's part of it too, right? Yes, okay. and also I think the other one is, um, main, the major thing is the permit streamlining. For example, for some of the project, should that be a design review board review or it could be a DRB chair review? And the mm -hmm. DRB chair review, could it be a staff level review? So I think we try to find a way to kind of streamline the process, maybe right. I think from costs and time perspective too, because I know every time you bring an item to the board or commission, the cost is what the applicant needs to pay is different than the chair review costs. <laughs> so yeah. we totally understand the time and cost. So uh, we definitely want to hear your suggestions, idea, maybe some of the item could be a chair review, this, some of the chair review could be a staff level, maybe an over-the-counter review. Yeah, I, I actually on that, I there's some chair reviews that I think you know, somebody's just changing out the shingles on the roof. They're just re-roofing with the same with the same roof, mm -hmm. uh, like stuff like that. I feel like it doesn't really need to be reviewed by by the chair or yeah. You know, yeah. It, it just because like, it's not really a yeah that big of an aesthetic change. Or like in San Marino, they have like a pre-approved window list. Yeah. So as long as you like use those windows that's been a pre-approved, then you don't need to do a chair review. Oh, that's nice. Right. Oh. So like staff can automatically say, okay, it's on the list, then it's approved. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I feel and like that was really nice because then like you don't know if you're gonna have to wait like for how many months. Yeah. 
that can be a ma actually my neighbor's going through a challenge with window like with windows and then changing them out and then getting approval so it can really delay construction and cause challenges with like getting the approval and um, from my experience too like for historical homes i know the chair likes this one particular like model and um you know i think for client owner homeowners they're like oh i want a budget friendly window and he's like well if you pick this one i'm gonna approve it so like then now i know like every time we're at a budget like uh, renovation if i use that window i'll get the historic for a historical chair i'll get that approved you know yeah. then i don't have to like guess like do we have to um, allocate more construction budget you to know? that that's yeah. yeah that's such a good point yeah i heard you mention to otc the over the counter and i will say i'm working in other cities that specifically for adus where they have over the counter it's limited to 500 square feet a lot of that ties into the school fees too but it's limited to five, long beach specifically it ties into um it's a 500 square foot limit it's garage conversions like they're very simple but they're over the counter and so i it happens like same day um and it's it's very helpful so i don't know and just in terms of the load of adus and i, I i'm not aware of how many applications that the city is receiving but I think considering something along those lines would be really helpful because it's approves quickly. It's can be straightforward. Long Beach also for the ADUs has done um, pre-approved plans. And I think this, I think South Pasadena may have considered that in the past. I'm not 100% sure. So that may be another thing to streamline ADUs. Um, Cause those are pretty straightforward and J ADUs the junior ADUs also. Um, I don't know if there's other over the counter suggestions that we have in terms of permitting just to make things faster and more efficient the ADUs are pretty simple but I don't know about any other reviews that could be well not ADU in particular but like for like today's item number four so I notice it's not visible from the street and the windows are matching existing like things if it has like cer meets certain guidelines I know it's over the 500 feet I think um, single story. I think that was the square footage. I think that's why it needs to come to us. Um, but like, I guess if we change that one thing, then it could have been a staff, uh, a chair review or staff review right, or something like that, right? So some of the, um, our staff chair initial review. process, yeah, for example, review. could we move some of the DRB to DRB chair? Right. Yeah. Some of the DRB chair to, to the staff. To staff. I think okay. I don't want to, of course, overburden yeah. the, the chair too. So I think that yeah. you're going to drop down something. I right. Think that, I think that is a good suggestion. I just right. want to know if there's a number of square yeah. footage. Because I think for today's case, yeah. um, the one we just heard, um, i trying to remember the numbers. Uh, if the room addition is more than 500 square feet or more than 25% of existing home, mm -hmm. which some are houses, very small. So right. if you use more than 25%, right. that would trigger. A DRB. Yeah. And I think the, the historical home has a different number. I think it's 199 square feet. Historical, <laughs> you're right. It's 200 or more. So, for example, we focus on if it's a single story, if there's a number that the board think is more appropriate, mm -hmm. make it do a yeah. chair review. Um, just, I think right. I think our thought is just kind of bring this to commission's discussion. I think right. have to let us know. I think maybe when you have time later on, send mm -hmm. it. Let me know your thoughts. Like a bullet point, hey, this should be changed, this should mm -hmm. be this. I think we definitely like to hear from you. Yeah. I think we've had a few of those where because of the 25% requirement, it triggers it to go in front of us. And we're like, this is a seems like a simple approval. It seems like a a bit of an onerous process for the applicant too and for staff. And you know, it's not necessarily something that we need to review, but it's just because, you know, historically homes were smaller, now homes are getting much bigger. And, and I think because of that, that seems like the 25% seems a bit arbitrary to me, but I don't know. Or you could add like 24% for homes over X amount of square feet. Yeah. So like, so there's a limit. Yeah. So like if a house was less than, I don't know, let's say a thousand square feet, like there's a lot, 800 square foot homes, then like they are exempt from the 25% or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, and I definitely feel like the CH, the cultural heritage can increase the square footage. 
Because <laughs> 200 square feet, that's like not it's really an not addition. Much. It, no, yeah. it's not. So I think automatically there's like a lot of projects that have to go in front of CHC, right? And the other reason staff mentioned the room addition, um, as some of you may know that um, our municipal club actually mentioned that if you, the, the property owner want to do a room addition, the ADU, the ADU cannot be approved until the room addition is approved first. So if the room addition is to go to DRB or CHC, that ADU has to wait. <laughs> so, so I think that, that I know we're definitely in the, in the business of increasing, encourage more housing. So if the ADU has to wait for the room addition to go in front of a advisory body, so that might delay the, so the ADU process. It's because we have, it's because we had a code where if there's still floor area on the property and you do the ADU, you would take away the floor area. So can we change the code where no matter what you could, like let's say you do the ADU, but you don't take away from the floor area, right? So that, so no matter what, you always have that 800 like bonus, right? And then, so after you do the ADU, you can still come back and do the addition. I was going to say, I think that might go against state laws. I think the ADU state laws, I think they require you to approve the ADU. Like you can't do it contingent on an addition. I could be wrong. I'm not no, aware. You're, good. you're still allowed to do it. You're, you're still allowed to do the ADU because you have, let's say yeah. you, you have like, you're allowed to build 2000, but yeah. your house is only 1000. Then you're using some of your FAR to, to do that, you you have eighteen hundred now. Yeah, but they still have to approve the ADU without being contingent on approving the the by state law. I think they have a limited time and it has to be approved. Like right, on, yeah, but, like they are approved. They built the. Oh, ADU, okay, okay, they built right? it. Yeah. Then in South Pass, it counts towards your floor area. Yes. So now okay. you can only add a two hundred addition instead of one thousand. Yeah. Which, which you could have done if you didn't do the ADU. You want to but is that also legal? Because I thought you can build up to twelve hundred square feet that can't count towards a count can't count towards your um, FAR. I think under state law, that's what it right. The twelve hundred is the limit. I could be wrong right. again. I don't want to like open up a can of worms. That's something yeah. we can look into. I think the other things were I, I know our ADU ordinance was adopted in twenty twenty one. That's three years old now, and also within that three years, there's so many changes. Yes, yeah. so one of our uh, updates is definitely need to update the ADU regulation. Okay, okay, like, yeah. Already mentioned that some of the requirements may not meet today's state law, so. Yeah. Oh, any thought process on the DRB chair? I know, for example, the board member Hill and Karen, <laughs> Chair Nichols, any other items that you think could be a staff level review? Because I think you mentioned about the re roof and the other items. Windows. I felt so bad so many times reviewing applicants that had just simple window changes. And I just felt like, or windows that unfortunately in some cases retroactively were asking for approval because they had already installed them. And so I feel like that should just be automatic. Like, that should be a staff level review as opposed to going because it delayed. I know for some people they were getting so upset because it's like they'd reach out to me and they're like, we haven't gotten approval yet. We heard, I, I know they were not supposed to do this, but they came to me, they emailed me and they're like, we heard you haven't, you know, that you haven't approved. I'm like, I haven't received it yet. And so I understand that there's, th this was not the staff, previous staff, but I think that that would help too, to just all, all window reviews just are at a staff level. Right. I don't know if, if you're getting a lot of windows. Yeah, you get some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the things that don't seem to change the the residents in any like visual way. They're just like switching out A for A or you know, it, it there's a lot of that and it seems kind of unnecessary. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, any thought process on the uh, approval period? And for example, right now, the, the one we just approved earlier is only good for one year. So what that means, they need to submit to building safety within that one year window. And of course, once you submit it, they have a different time frame once they submit it. Any thought process on extending the entitlement period for longer? I think it could be different projects. could be room like single if, family, if it's bigger projects. Too. been approved, I mean, if it's approved and it's one year and one month, is our opinion on what we approved going to change in 13 months? I mean, it's, it's a good I, point. I don't know why you'd rescind that necessarily. Yeah, yeah, I'd be I'd be curious why it wouldn't be longer. I guess I'm I'm curious what the like, what the counter arguments would be like. 
why does there need to be i mean intuitively i understand why there needs to be a time limit but in terms of the objectives of the planning department or the objectives of the design review board i'm not mm -hmm. sure why there would be a time limit at all like are are developers encouraged like if there's a one-year time limit are developers encouraged to build housing more quickly and to not like trade developments as much i could see if there was a longer review period the developers are just like trading entitlements back and forth and yeah. nothing ever gets built is that the counter argument um or does a longer period um allow these projects to gestate and you know interest rates go down and, and more housing gets built i guess i'm not really sure what the what the economic argument is or that the housing argument and um, that's definitely a good point that that staff can look into. I think staff just want to like explore uh, the the possibilities and also kind of get people's feedback. Is we definitely heard, of course, for the last couple of years, and and a lot of applicants requesting for time extension, and or find a way to extend their their projects. I know a lot of project we see is the the room addition, new single family house. So I we definitely see a lot of a uh, time extension or try to re-entitle their room addition new home project. So but Stephanie, they want to kind of hear the, uh, kind of your feedback, your thought process. But it's only one year to submit to building. So really they, they don't, they can't, they, they have one year to like, they just don't want to spend the money to get the structural drawings and the energy calculations. Is that like, because they, they can't necessarily start building. Right. I, so. I think oh, staff, what I forgot to mention, I think another thing is um, what I recall is actually, for example, the DRV approvals for one year, but for the Coaching Heritage Commission approval, that's 18 months to pull the building permit. So we have two sets of uh, expiration date. <laughs> kind of, it might be confusing uh, to, to the architect. So, it's like, uh, like, for example, for the one we just have tonight, they have one year to submit to building safety. I think once they submit it, have another 18 months. Yeah. So it, so it could be, mm -hmm. what, two and a half years. Yeah. But for historical home, for a room addition to a historical home, they have 18 months total to pull the building permit. Oh, wow. So they got two different <laughs> matrix. That's so you might confuse yeah. a lot of people. It's like, why is it? So I think yeah. one of our thought process maybe make it consistent across uh -huh. the board, whether it be yeah. historical or non-historical home. Why does there need to be any time limit? Um, we definitely see a uh, uh, advantage if, for example, people asking for variance for, for a waiver of the code that if there's a finding to be, be made, they maybe need to need to kind of if they get the finding, get the approval from the city, they should build out within that time. But for a regular project, you should have I've seen other city have three or two years, and this city we have one year, so. I don't know the thought process behind why it was one year to begin with. No, I'm just curious why we, oh, why you would have one at all. I mean, I understand, like, if the zoning code changed such that, like, a project wouldn't be approved in current conditions, that you would want the project to be reinitiated. But I'm just curious, like, why there needs to be a time of it at all. The right top of my head could be the, for example, I know the, you're talking about the, the zoning code change. I know maybe the building code change. I know the building code change every three years. I know most of the stuff that staff working on, the architectural plan, probably there won't be affect that much, but it still could be little stuff here and there that affect the building code. So maybe one thing yes. I can think right off that, the building code changes every three years. Mm -hmm. So it's tracking potential changes in the building code. That that could be definitely one one I, one thing I can kind of I can think of. Maybe it could, could be other items too. Mm -hmm. Maybe they want once the people to get entitlement, they want to be active, right? Because you don't want projects to sit there. Um, I know this is different than the construction, right? Construction you don't want ongoing construction for years. I think the entitlement is different. I think maybe the thought process once you get entitled, you should be actively pursuing the plan check, getting a permit, getting it constructed. Maybe they, they want to put some limit to it, I think. But so I it sounds like there's good arguments in both directions, right? It sounds like the short time period was a pain point for some developers. And then it sounds like a long time period is goes against the public interest. So how do we kind of find 
a sweet spot between yeah. those two. I also have experience in LA DBS where, because they you have like physical drawings, <laughs> and we submitted, and then the uh, we submitted the RTI, and actually the building department lost the drawings because it took them it took so long for the owner to pay for the permit fees. It took them six months to pay for it, and the city could not find our drawings. So, like there there's. Like let's say they submitted something and it got approved and then the drawings are like waiting in RTI for like two years. And then the city has to be in charge of like tracking all these physical drawings. And so if all the developers are like, oh, I'll just wait two or three years or unlimited, then the building department's like, like has to hold all these point. drawings. And the re it. They don't have the resources to do yeah. that too. I mean, they should also be digital at this point. Right. Yeah, but, but still, but yeah. yeah. But I think, that was one thing that I could think of off the top of my head. And that's interesting. Yeah. I had a similar issue with LADB. The same thing. When you said that, I was like, oh, I forgot about that. But yeah, it, this was years ago. But I remember it, we had a similar issue, same yeah. thing. So the, uh, like the time limits are interesting, but it, it does go against, I, I really understand James's point because it goes against like with developers, with, you know, there's so many other factors that go into like the economic climate, how things are you know, getting, getting lending, getting construction financing can be really tricky. So like to say, oh, you have a year and then you can start this process. It can be really challenging um, from an economic, from just from an economic standpoint. It just depends if, if times are good, then it's like, oh, that's not a problem. But when times are not good or when times are more challenging, then it makes it really difficult. So, so I think some flexibility there um, would also be helpful because is it, Matt, is it too extensions you're allowed up to two extensions yes and try to remember i think initial is one year but also i think the director can approve one year and i think that it depends on the reviewing body actually it can go up to three year total okay but the additional i think the third year needs to be approved by the body that approved it if it's a drb or planning commission okay okay because the other thing too when you think about it when you're submitting if you're going to make changes, then you're not building the, I think it's the 20%, right? Then if you're, if you're making 20% worth of changes over 20%, then it's not, you have to re-entitle it. So you can't keep it as it is. So it doesn't, it doesn't really, in that sense, it doesn't really matter, right? Because you'd have to, if you're going to make, if you, a new owner comes in, they're going to, they're like, okay, we're going to take this entitled project. Now we're going to change it. That's what we just saw, right? With this, this house edition, it's been going on for four years. And part of it is they've got to get it reapproved, And because they've got, changes over that threshold. I don't know what that threshold is, but over that threshold. And so, so I feel like then putting a limit on, Hey, if this is this, what the body approved, we said this, is okay. And they get five years to build it. It's like, Hey, we approved that. We think that that's acceptable. So for me, the whole, you know, maybe I know unlimited sounds scary, but it seems like there should be a lot more flexibility if, if it was an approved project and that's the project that the ultimate end, like owner will build. And the other, I, I think, I, like a staff mentioned, I think it's only the beginning. I think as all of you thinking about more, would it be your own personal <laughs> project, your residents or your neighbors? Then you, oh, maybe definitely email us, email me, so we can kind of start tracking all the comments we receive, and also definitely go out to different um, organizations, local architects, and local contractors, get their feedbacks. We definitely want to hear all of you. Then, so when we presented to the Planning Commission City Council later on, we have a constructive dialogue conversation with the commission about the certain section and why we're pursuing, why we're asking the changes. But, but definitely email us your comments or put a list of items. I think, Chair Nichols, for you as well, I think <laughs> maybe you think, hey, this should be a <laughs> staff level, and I can do this, and you can, I get kind of trade off. <laughs> What, can I just add one more thing, just because on the top of my mind, height. So height is very confusing in the zoning code because I know that I've had this on other issues. Other, I've had this issue on, on multiple projects where, you know, I had an elevator overrun and that counted towards the height, but it wasn't in the code to like there was no exception to it. So that may have been updated and changed, but I know that's really challenging because you're like, well, I'm trying to work within this height limit, 
but now I have an elevator overrun. So I'm not supposed to put an elevator in my building to make this work. And so it's stuff like that, like the mechanical equipment. I saw, I saw it on the list, the equipment setbacks. And so, and, 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 um, screening, I think all of those really need to be looked at in the zoning code. Cause I saw inconsistencies or things that were unclear. And then we're trying to design within this envelope because we're being told, oh, you can't, you can only do like, I think it was like a two, I'm probably going to misquote this, but it's, I think it's a two foot for like an architectural element, but not for like something like equipment. And I was like, this doesn't make sense. So I think stuff like that, I know we've had that before on some of the projects that are doing rooftop decks and their railing extends beyond the height limit, like the 28 we've foot. Reviewed one of those. Yeah. And so it's stuff like that. I think clarifying that is, can be really, would be really helpful in the code. That's it. Sorry. All right. Uh, I don't think we have comments from the city council liaison tonight. <laughs> um, so we now move on to comments from our design review board members. Are there any comments from the board? Nope. Cool. All right. Uh, we now move on to comments from our subcommittees. We don't have any subcommittees. so. And so thank you, board members. We are now moving on to comments from staff. Thank you, Chair and members of the board. So one of the main items, of course, the, the zoning code update. Uh, um, staff want to bring it to to this body since it is part of uh, our ERB <laughs> work plan. So it's definitely want to get your thought process. So thank you for your feedback. And I think staff has this one item. Um, I think just kind of give you update on housing element um, update. So uh, earlier this week, I think it's Monday, staff finally, our city finally received a housing element certification from HCD. So, and we all, we post the um, the letter on the city housing element website. So uh, we finally got a certification letter. However, it kind of come with, we still need to do a lot of programs in the housing element and HCD made it very specific. <laughs> they named all the um, the programs. So, so, so it's like kind of, we got the approval, but still need to do all this and they will continue actively monitor our program. So. Of course, the item I just mentioned for the zoning co-op, they definitely has something to do with the, uh, the housing element program because we have to make the project easier. For example, the ADU, <laughs> like to facilitate the ADU project, but also in the meantime, we want to use the opportunity to streamline maybe the window project, the room addition project. So so thank you all for, for participating and definitely let us know your thought process as well. Thank you. All right, so now we adjourn to the regular design review board meeting scheduled for Thursday, September 5th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. Thank you.